what does Supernatural, The Hunger Games, the Harry Potter series, and John Wick all have in common? They all had sequels. They all had sequels, but now they all have prequels. Think about it. The Winchesters, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, the Fantastic Beasts movies, mm -hmm. and now, of course, The Continental from the world of John Wick. And it's, it doesn't even end there. We've done other episodes like Pennyworth, which is technically based off all the Batman series. You have Andor, which is based yeah, off of... Star Wars. Was that Rebel One? Rogue One. Rogue One. And then uh, uh, Spartacus, even. But that was more... Spartacus? Oh, okay. That was more because the uh, main actor got sick. Mm -hmm. um, but the real question I had for you was, uh, there was a show that you used to watch, big fan of, Sons of Anarchy, right? Yes. And I remember near the end of it, you were saying how Kurt Sutter had plans to make a prequel for the families? Is that what the show was about? Uh, I think it was supposed to be a prequel for like the first 12 or first nine. Yeah, the first nine. Yeah. And that what was that supposed to be? Uh, all I know is that Brad Pitt was attached to it and it was supposed to be like a limited series. But like the main character, Jax, I remember you telling me this, this is why I'm asking about it, was his father and there was supposed to be a younger version of- Ron Perlman's character. Ron play. Perlman's character. Yeah. And that's kind of like this, I would think, because the Continental has characters from John Wick, but only the old ones, and not yeah. Lawrence Fishburne's character, at least so far. You're mainly dealing with Winston and Sharon, and then yeah. like a few sprinkles of like other people. And then obviously they throw in Mel Gibson as this wild card who didn't exist at all in the John Wick series. Yep, he's Cormac, the villain of the as series. Cormac, yeah. And the first episode here is Brothers in Arms. It's actually less of a mini series, more of an event series, because there's only going to be three episodes. Wait, there's only going to be three episodes of the entire season? Three episodes. Each one's like 90 minutes. So this is Endeavor, because that's exactly why Endeavor did 90 minute episodes for three episodes, usually a season. Yeah, and we'll get into whether or not that worked for them. But first, there's a lot of plot to go through. So. Um, tell me about it. Well, this is 1970s New York. I would think that we've seen other shows that have done this. The Get Down was 1970s, yes. 70s New York. You got Vinyl. You got The Deuce. So I, I'm familiar with the era. I can just imagine what the clothes that they were all wearing and, and what was going on with that. Well, it actually and does. Fargo. It's yeah. not only 1970s. The first scene that we get is uh, 1955, I think, New York. Oh, wow. So where, it lasts even further back. Yes, and it's in black and white. I really like the colorization of that scene. And you, you get Frankie and Winston. This is when they're really young. Well, Frankie, you have to introduce because Winston, we are all aware yes. of as Ian Machine. Also, if you haven't seen John Wick, any of the four, we're going to be spoiling that starting like right now this was so one of my in like notes. five seconds john wick is dead by the end of the fourth film so like there's no reason to mm. they, gave, they gave it 10 percent like uncertainty on purpose yeah he'll, he'll probably return in john wick 5 but right now it seems like he's tired of the character he's tired of all those action <laughs> stunts he will be appearing most probably in Ballerina, the Ana de Armas movie. Oh, everyone's confirmed for that. Even Ian McShane, right? Yes, but he won't be the main character of it. And he's not going to appear in this show at all. This was one of my most anticipated shows of the year because walking out of John Wick 4 after the movie, in the movie theater even, I pulled out my phone just to see if he was really dead. So I went to the Wikipedia to see if there was any plans for any future uh, installments. And then I saw that, yeah, this was coming out in September. And when the writer's strike happened, I was scared that this was going to be affected by it because I... I was just really excited. Who d doesn't want to see what, like, the inner workings of the Continental and the people inside it? I'll, I'll pull I'll pull something there. So, like, when I saw it was on Peacock, that's what scared me. Because it's like, mm -hmm. well, they're going to temper it down. It's going to be more of, like, a network show. They're not going to have the same budget. But then I heard the backstory behind that. Lionsgate was working on it. They worked with Stars. Originally, Stars was supposed to air it, which would have been, like kind of a Spartacus level of violence and uh, budget. And then it got moved over to Peacock. So there was more of a chance of it retaining a lot of the violence and the cool actions that we would have been, that everybody who's invested in the John Wick universe wants to see. So where do we end up landing? Uh, out of the whole 90 minutes, how much of it is just fight scenes? Uh, I would say probably a good 20 minutes. Okay, all right. So then, all right, give me the blowdown on the story. So going back to Frankie, he is Winston's older brother. Mm -hmm. And it starts off, the first shot is like an alcohol bottle with a rag tied to it and fire. So they, Are you talking about a Molotov cocktail? Yes, Molotov cocktail. All right. And Frankie and Winston are running away from the police. You should know those from Peaky Blinders. They use them yes. all no, the time. No, it's not only using Peaky Blinders, it's used everywhere. It reminded me more of three uh, billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, when she does it to the police station. And the 
older brother younger brother dynamic reminds me. It was it Kin, the one with Kyle Chandler, or what was what was the show with? Kin that? was the one with uh, Charlie Cox. All right, I'm obviously talking about uh, Mayor of Kingstown. Mayor of Kingstown. It correct. reminded me more of Hell or High Water because that movie deals with two brothers who are outlaws who are trying to uh, not really flee, but they're definitely kind of of the same um, same stature. Where it's like they just keep on pulling off like these crazy things. Uh, you said Hell on High Water, right? Hell or High Water. Hell or High Water, which reminds me of Hell on Wheels, which is why I was, like, confused for a second. But, yeah. All right. Anyways, so there's yeah, these so, two brothers. So they, they somehow end up in jail. We don't really exactly know what for because we don't know where the Molotov cocktail was used. But Frankie is talking to Winston, and Winston is uh, saying how he's he didn't do anything. He doesn't feel like they should be there. And then Frankie is like, that's exactly correct. You did not do anything. This was all me. So we learn that Frankie, even he's at a protective. young age... Yeah, well, not only protective, he's taking the fall for whatever ended up happening. I assume it's going to be explored more in the two episodes to come out now. This isn't the Mufasa Scar Brotherhood of, like, they hate each other or that, like, one's going to kill each other. This is a close bond, and they're, they're friends. And if one something happens to one, the other one's going to, like... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that the best way to go about this is I have a short summary of the episode, but then I should just jump into my pros and cons and kind of talk about any scenes. How do you, that you do a short up? summary of a like feature it's, long well, episode? Well, that's the thing. This is a 90 minute pilot. Yeah. So I think the easiest way to go about it would be just kind of give an overall. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Thing. Okay. Go so for it. So set in the 70s, because this is after the flashback, it does like years later, but it's somewhere in the 70s. We have Frankie. He's robbing Cormac O'Connor. Honor's vault, and he escapes with an ancient coin press. Cormac is the uh, manager of the Continental. Yeah. Who, that we know Winston will end up At becoming. some point. I assume that Cormac is probably going to die by Winston's hand or something like that, but yes, at this point, he is the manager of the Continental. Um, but when Frankie is trying to rob this vault, his partner turns on him that he was doing this with. Actually, the first 10 minutes of the show when he's robbing the bank reminded me of the first 10 minutes of FUBAR, because they kind of pulled the same, exact same stunt. Hmm. Both of them uh, go down to the sewer, at least in, with the Continental, it's actually a subway station. But then they go into the subway tunnel and they blow the bank up uh, or the, where the vault is from the bottom. Why don't they just drive a bus into it, uh, Joker style? Well, what happens with the Continental is they have a hook and the, and the hook is tied to a string and the string is tied to this huge lock to where the vault is. So when this... So uh, they want to rob it without making it clear that anything's happened. They right. want to do a money heist almost. And not only that, there's actually like a huge party going on with music upstairs sure. so that so that it drowns out the sound whenever the lock ends up coming off of the vault okay so they go into the vault and i was thinking to myself all right they're going to steal money but no even frankie says to his partner he's like we're not here for any money we're here for this uh item which again we learn later on is this ancient coin press the i assume what they use for all those little coins currency. that John Wick uses, yeah. The it's, currency of it Continental. seems very ambiguous whether or not it's worth one coin for a suit or, like, two coins. <laughs> it's just yeah. how, how you're feeling at that time, you know? Like I, always, John Wick, I thought it was always a cool currency, though, to be able to use. Because you just see them, you always see them just, like, When you say ancient, I'm assuming you're, because they talk about how this is all connected to the high table, right? Yes. And then there was, you've met people in this episode that are from the high table. For one scene, and there's, yeah. like a connection that they make saying that it's existed for hundreds of years. So this whole coin currency is way before the dollar, way before any other denomination. It's the it's the item though that like everyone is going after. Kind yeah. of like the bag full of money in Bullet Train or any other TV show. The main reason why this whole thing is happening is because Frankie is wanting to steal this ancient coin press. And he does. Like yes. he's able to do it. And that's the thing. So his his uh his, the person he's working with turns on him and then it turns out that the Continental is kind of alerted and there's a ton of security going and that's our first John Wick fight scene. And I was really glad to see that they they took the same intensity and tone and they were able to transport me back into that John Wick world mm -hmm. pretty easily. And our main character at this point is Frankie. And does he do the, what the John Wick does? Does he do the well, that actually, thing? So that actually uh, it happens after the fight scene. We see Winston, the first shot, or the first scene we see with him older is he's talking to investors at this like brunch. I guess it was either in the Continental or somewhere close to there. And he's trying to find people who are going to invest 
invest in in the continental or find or money. So he for still it. is working for the continental. Let, let me ask you. So in the 1950s storyline where they're getting arrested, did Cormac show up to like adopt them or something? Like, is there a reason why we're led to no. believe that Winston and Franklin know Cormac? No, I well, Cor I did. I think that Cormac did. He was kind of like a father figure, but there yes. was something that happened that ended up making them, I guess, cut ties. Yes, but Winston, you're saying, is still trying to get money for uh, his his place, like for Cormac's well, place. Well, okay, so I think that actually this might have been in in London because they were saying this. Yes. Even a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he is kidnapped about. in London, from what I was. Reading. Yeah, that's so that so that's actually what happens. He's speaking to this businessman, and then the businessman's wife comes in. And, and starts like kind of causing a racket talking about how uh, her husband should not have to pay for all this and then the husband does the exact opposite and so, and I think it's going to give Winston two million dollars. Why does all this matter? We learn about this because later on it turns out that Winston is actually having an affair with the wife and this was all planned. To, uh, By the, Winston and the wife? And the wife, yeah. To the try wife. to like fleece the husband yes. out of money? Okay, so this is basically the long con. This is just the Sawyer from Lost. This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and after the they sleep together the wife takes a shower and then that's suddenly where Winston gets knocked out he literally with an injection shot by three masked men and they take him to Cormac in New York City and this is where mm -hmm. we learn what Cormac exactly wants he wants to get Frankie because the beginning scene where Frankie is having that massive shootout he was able to get away with the ancient coin press mm -hmm. so uh, and Winston's like I don't really care about Frankie anymore it doesn't really matter and Cormac is like I don't think that's exactly the case Find Frankie or I'm going to kill you and him. So he does let him go. And yes. Part part of that is his like personal bond with these guys. Mm -hmm. Like most of the time, he would go torture. There's route. even a line that Cormac says where There's he's that. like, "You're looking pretty good." I would like to think that I had something to do with that. Or along the lines of like, uh, "Normally I would break your fingers, but today I'll let you go." <laughs> and then he has him tailed, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. He's like, "Follow him uh, the second that Winston leaves," and it's it's you know, basically like I would say a full hour of Winston just trying to find Frankie before he actually does, and then so so Winston smart enough to use his ties to find his brother, but not smart enough to notice that there's a giant <laughs> tail on his back? I think that, like, I think he doesn't care. Okay. <laughs> but I, at this point, he, he goes to a couple different people. They give him a car and, and some guns, and they're like, find Frankie, and then once you find Frankie, give me back my car. He finds Frankie at, by, I'd say, maybe an hour through the episode. Uh -huh. And then he also, Frankie has a wife named Yen. She reminded me a lot of the daughter of Donnie Yen in John Wick 4, if you remember, yeah. because she's also an assassin. Uh huh. And I think that we might even see Donnie Donnie Yen's character Wait, in Donnie Kid Yen's form. daughter was also an assassin. I thought she was a violin player. But don't you remember at the very end of the uh, the post credit scene in John Wick 4, she walks up to, uh, to the person... She that... doesn't walk up to her father. She, he's walking up to her, and someone is about to kill him. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's yeah, right. But, yeah, she's yeah. not an assassin, at least from what we know. Uh, but so Frankie, let me, let me go back to Frankie. Yes. He has a wife. His wife name is Yen, and Yen speaks a different language. Were you thinking she, of the persons whose daughter that he, or the, the father, he killed someone. Donnie Yen killed yes, someone in the fourth, yeah. and then she swore to kill him. Yes, that's and, and that's the person that's yeah. walking up to Donnie Yen. That's right. the person I got confused with. It's it's been, uh, it, the third, fourth movie was a long movie, so it's like three that. hours. Yeah, his wife uh, is an assassin. They all decide that they're going to evade uh, Cormac's pursuit because I guess that uh, Winston understands why Frankie decided to steal this ancient coin press. After... Do we get any other hotels besides the Continental in this? No, when they're in London when they're going around looking for places. No, but I was glad that focused on the Continental. In fact, there's a subplot about some NYPD investigators who are investigating the Continental. You have Officer Katie, who is having an affair with her superior, Detective Mayhew. But they're trying to figure out what exactly is going on in the Continental. Why it always luck. seems like there's so much mystery. And also, we're introduced to a pair of assassins. Uh, three people. A brother and a sister named Miles and Lou. And then their partner, Lemmy. In fact, that's who Winston goes to to figure out some whereabouts where Frankie might be, I think, about halfway through. You probably just mentioned, like, two creepy brothers. Is that something? Because everybody was talking about these no. two creeps. No, yeah, they're, they're twins. 
Mountains, and they are at the very end of oh, the episode. Okay. So Frankie and Winston, uh, yeah, Frankie, Winston, and Yen, they all are trying to get on this helicopter so they can leave somewhere. Sounds and, very convoluted, and yeah. And Cormac, he's like hiring all these people to try and kill them, and then he says, bring out the twins. And the twins were people that didn't really speak at all. They had the same color hair, but they were a brother and sister. There even is this comic scene where they go into the elevator, and they're even though they're about to kill people, they're like yawning, and it doesn't really so, seem like they care. So, Breaking Bad twins versus these twins. <laughs> Who wins in a, like, we have to, whoever dies first loses? Uh, I would say probably these twins win because they're assassins. They're but trying, they're shooting you, at you them. You don't know who I'm talking about. In Breaking Bad, the no, two twins you're talking about the people the from Salamanca season three. game or whatever they are, they... Yeah, but these people seem like they're emotionless. You don't see anything on their face. They just seem like they're completely hardcore. Don't you remember the Hank scene? Like, that guy, like, they don't seem like they care Yeah, but either. they couldn't even take down Hank Schrader. I'm saying these twins could take right. down Hank Schrader. That's fair. All and right. they actually end up taking down Frankie. He decides to sacrifice himself to save Winston and Yen and buy them some time as they're leaving. Did so he, like, jump in front of his brother? He, or no, he jumps coming? out the helicopter, though, and he, he jumps out with the ancient coin press. And could he still be alive? No, he gets a headshot. Exactly like Hell or High Water. That's why I put it there. Just like the brother in that does. He is 100% dead. But then it turns into <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy because Cormac gets the ancient coin press, or at least the case for it, opens it up and sees that there's just a monkey flicking him off. Much like Yondu when he opens up the orb at the end of the first Guardians of the Galaxy and there's just like a toy inside. Or so another, they, yeah. they yeah, still yeah. have the coin press. Yeah, another series I wanted to compare it to was Arcane. Because Arcane. if you remember, the two girls in that in, the, in their gang like had been adopted by sort of the criminal aspect guy, and one was obsessed with the monkeys and stuff. And it was it's there's less of a connection. I get that, but it's more about like the underworld and how there's still like a familial um, yes. like importance and bond there. And then like sacrifice is a big thing because if you remember the the dad's character, like bad stuff yeah, ends up happening to him, and this. Frankie uh, it sacrifices himself, and that ends. That starts a journey for our main character, who again is Winston, right? Yeah, I'm a yeah. little sad that you said it's going to be three episodes because I was thinking to myself this might be like a ten episode series that in this hour and thirty minutes was just supposed to kind of introduce us to really what's going to like expand into a greater story. If you break it up into twenty minute episodes, you could probably get to round ten. So. <laughs> yeah, well, just yeah. saying. I, do you want me to start with my pros or cons first? I do want you to jump into your pros first, but first I want to make sure that we've gone through all the characters. You've got Winston. You talked about Katie, uh, Frankie. Just stop me if you haven't mentioned someone. Mm -hmm. Miles. Yen, Lou, Sharon, obviously Lance Reddick's yeah. character. Sharon, I was I was glad. I think that he was the most uh, most related to his character in the first four John Wick films. Yeah, there was some there was some pushback for how Winston was represented because even the main character. Right. The so game, I had a question. I had a question about this. Yeah. I thought, and I could be remembering this wrong, that uh, that Winston and Sharon were always kind of together. Like I thought that they were always almost as close as like Frankie. At least I thought I remembered Winston and talking about that in one of the films, but it seems here like he, that uh, Sharon was It seems by his death Cormac. in the fourth scene, yeah, the, the, in the fourth episode, fourth uh, segment Word, of yeah. John, John Wick, that they w were, like, tied together from the very get-go, but I think this is just how they meet. Mm, okay. Yeah, so I guess 40 years is enough for them to have built up that bond. But uh, I was talking more about the casting itself. Colin Woodell doesn't have anything close to Ian McShane's accent. Mm -hmm. He wasn't even going for a canon interpretation goes, of the character later Oh, yeah, because that goes into my cons, but it was a looper problem where it was like, Colin oh, Woodo, he's acceptable. Yeah, yeah. He's neither, I didn't think he was amazing, nor did I think he was terrible in the role, but he doesn't sound or look like Winston, much like Joseph Gordon-Levitt hey, doesn't looper look like Bruce Willis. Looper is the perfect comparison. You know how much I hate that movie because <laughs> of that exact reason. I still have yet to see. It's almost the same um, thing with um, when they cast uh, Days of Future Past guy to play P Professor X. And it's oh, like, James McAvoy? But, but they, they, <laughs> I think they did a good job with that one. Like, they eventually got there. They made him bold by the end. <laughs> but, uh, but with this, yeah, Looper, that's that's one complaint. But then, uh, let's see, Mayhew and then Uncle Charlie. Was there an Uncle Charlie there? Uncle Charlie? Yes. That sounds familiar. Okay, well, there's been a few characters who have been in the future films who they recast as the previous one. That was just another person. But um, 
Yeah, go into your pros. Okay, so the show did what I was afraid it wouldn't be able to do, transforming you back into the world of John Wick easily, whether it be the cinematic shots, music, long take action sequences, tone, costumes, and above all, it absolutely nailed the colorization. I'm not even talking about the beginning scene, the black and white uh, flashback scene. I'm talking about whenever it just matching the color tone from the films. It's orange when it's inside the Continental. There's a blue sepia overtone when it's outside or inside abandoned buildings or, or any outside scenes. Green when there's about to be a tense action scene that shows you up. You are ostracizing our colorblind base. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I just, go ahead. I, I, I'm saying that no, like, it it's following cool. the same suit and it, it did just look cool. It like it, it, it was. I was so afraid that when I saw this it wasn't going to be able to pull it off and it was able to. Albert Hughes, the director of this episode, he also directed Menace to Society and um, The Book of Eli. Mm. Yeah, he came in there and he knew that it was going to be a prequel and it, I think you can give him a lot of credit for that. He said, ironically enough, that he wanted to just check out and have fun with this series. It didn't have any sort of uh, deeper meaning behind it. Yeah, you know, I we would, do I would agree with that. Okay, yeah. alright, so there's not like a lot of societal issues to bring, bring forth. Like with the other shows that we mentioned, with Deuce, with Vinyl, it seemed like it was going after the music industry or, or talking about like drugs and, mm -hmm. and prostitution and stuff. Not here. It's re <laughs> This is just your common fast well, and I furious think, I think thing. All John Wick uh -huh. films don't really bring up I mean, up he was created by a stuntman, and he's doing what he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that guy doesn't have anything. Like, he was originally, the original director was supposed to direct the first episode, but that got turned around rather Oh, quickly. why did, what, like... I think they just had it? other ideas for stuff. But, like, he still worked with him. It just was maybe timing. I don't know. It paid homage to classic films also. Uh, Frankie, I think in, within the first five minutes, the reason we know that there's a dance party going on upstairs and why he's able to pull off this heist is because he's working for Cormac, but there's a one shot a scene where he walks into the dance club and it was almost exactly like Boogie Nights. It was a nice shade of red, but in the beginning scene of Boogie Nights, the, uh, it's a one shot scene as well that's kind of following a character, but you're introduced to other characters along the way. It reminded me of that. And then you have the infamous tracking scene from Goodfellas where they're walking through the kitchen. Uh, when Winston is abducted, he, they walk him through a kitchen and I think that that was uh, supposed to pay tribute to that. And then even the ending line is the Matrix line about guns because he ends up making his way to Miles, Lou, and Lemmy with Yen, and he's saying how they're going to need guns because I'm assuming he's going to fight Cormac. All right, so what do you think of this line from the New York Times, all right? Okay. Story points are underlined by a relentless, on-the-nose selection of 1970s standards, Heart Chicago, <laughs> Jerry Rafferty, and the like, period details, a plot, plot, fizz, fizz, Alka-Seltzer commercial, a coffee poster, <laughs> Pong, allusions to black exploitation. Uh, Kung Fu films, The Day of the Jackal, are trotted out for your approval. So, uh, for, uh, so they're saying sounds... they, they're using that just to, I guess, uh, get the fan base to like it? The screen is full, but nothing makes much of an impression. They're saying that uh, by just having these elements there, it doesn't. you shouldn't be giving it credit. Do you think that they're being too harsh? I don't know. I mean, I really didn't f focus on it that much. I just thought that was cool that they were kind All of right. able to do that. Yeah, it's funny how like it's, you're kind of pulling a double standard, too. Like You, uh, you say, give some shows a claim because they do it, and they do it well, mm -hmm. and then other shows you're going to like go after because it's like you feel like they're doing it cheaply. Yeah. Yeah. And the references to the film served a point. My favorite part the whole episode by far is Katie. She somehow was able to make her way into the Continental. I didn't really understand what was going on there. She like locks eyes with the doorman and the doorman decides to open up for her. But she walks up to the uh, to the person pouring the front drinks, desk? the bartender. Oh, okay. No, and the bartender makes her a drink, and then she pays with cash. And you are able to see within a minute. It doesn't even take anyone talking because obviously that's not the currency that they use sure. at the Continental. It takes looks, and somehow just by looks, everyone is aware of who she is. That she's everyone an outsider. Everyone prickles, yeah. Yeah, and so when she goes to the front desk, so she because she wants a room, the front desk attendant is even like, "Sorry, we're all booked, but we have different hotels for you." I Why? thought that, that how was, did she even get in? That's so weird. That's right, yeah, no, yeah. that was the thing that I was confused by. They she must have she just something. locks eyes with this doorman, and the doorman just kind of nods and opens up for her. So I don't know if it was they were testing it or something. I, I don't know. Uh, and then Sharon's character, like I said, he was the most like he was in the films. And I thought the guy who uh, acted as him did a good job. The adjudicator was actually, I think, portrayed in the third Parabellum movie. Um, play, she was played by the same character who was in Billions that we did. Oh. Um, it, it, the one with the almost a shaved head. Yes. Um, but Katie McGrath is the one who plays her here. Um, and she 
it ironically is like the same age as the other person in real life, but uh, but she's from Merlin. She's Morgana Merlin? from Merlin. Yeah. Hmm. It looked like she was wearing maybe even a mask. Okay, so that's I was wondering if that's who the adjudicator was. We do get a quick scene. It turns out that the person that crossed Franklin at the beginning of the uh, when they were doing the bank heist ended up surviving. And then yeah, we're introduced to the adjudicator. She's wearing a mask, you can't really tell who she is, and then she has a bodyguard who I didn't I did not like this character. Is he like Bane? Yeah, a little bit, but he's not Jewish. wearing he's not wearing a mask. He's just really muscular and he seems like he's out of his mind. In fact, we can go to my cons now because the side characters, just talking about them, I didn't really see them as that threatening. They just seem like they were introduced and they're probably going to be killed off. Bullet fodder, yes. I assume they're just villains that are going to be killed off at the very end of this thing because they needed more villains to kill. Also, the side characters I mentioned earlier, Miles, Lou, and Lemmy, I do not like them. They don't seem like they're John Wick characters. They're given cheesy dialogue and corny jokes. Also, they're there for exposition dumping, and I don't don't see a reason for them to be in the show so far. Mm -hmm. um, I already mentioned the Looper problem. No Ian McShane. How are you not able to get Ian McShane well, It's not this? that you can't get him. It's like, how, what place would he serve four I, years I in the past? Well, here's the... I know... Are they going to de-age him? Well, I, would, I mean, I would be okay with that. My thing is, oh, if, you're going, if you're going to have Winston in the show, yeah. and like I said, Colin Woodwell is fine, mm -hmm. but I feel like you should only have it be Ian McShane, and if you don't want to do that because it's going to be about the 70s, then make it about someone would else. You, would you have been happy with a... Um, uh, if they'd done the same thing that Supernatural and the Winchesters did, where they brought in Dean as, like, to do narration for it. I think it would have helped. You would have ha liked to have Ian McShane do narration with a voice that is nothing like is the character too busy, who's portraying Is he too busy narrating for One Piece? I'm my, just saying people problem, would be constantly confused why he suddenly developed an my, accent in the narration. My problem with following uh, Winston's character in the 70s is that you fall into the same problem that every other spinoff has, which is this is a pretty significant story. We have never heard Winston talk about Frankie. We've never heard Winston really talk about his, his earlier life. Yet it seems like, I mean, if Frankie dies by a headshot right in front of him, he would probably bring that up at some point in the future films when you see him being older. I mean, these experiences are obviously going to shape him into taking over the Continental, so you feel like he would probably talk about it at some point. But when something is 50 years old, why would you, like, talk about it in your regular day life? It's talk about your brother? Even... Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it, in story writing, yes, you would constantly be bringing up the thing that makes your character. But people who lose their sibling that long ago and obviously have a busy enough career where other things take precedence he might it might be le best left unsaid speaking of frankie's death mm -hmm. it was so unneeded in this episode what was the point of spending a full like hour trying to find him when they were just going to kill him off at the very well, end of it now winston has his army right yeah but... he's going to face off against cormac and he needed the right motivation to do so but there was no reason for frankie to die that way i think that's my biggest problem with it sure he was trying to i guess uh, give winston and yet time to get away in the hell helicopter but he was in the helicopter as well and it seemed like they were going to be going against Cormac anyway so the fact that he decided to jump out being like Cormac wants me that's the reason I'm going to sacrifice myself it didn't really sit right with me also that final line with the matrix I need guns lots of guns absolutely not I hated that they even tried to be like oh Keanu Reeves he's in John Wick but he's also in the matrix so we're gonna have a connection there that's a good point did not really work uh let's talk Mel Gibson which infamously is not something that people want to do but uh, what did you think about his uh, his performance? I do not like Mel Gibson, but I think his performance was fine. A He's able of... to play off the villain, I think, perfectly well. Okay. A lot of reviewers have gone after his casting, but also they thought, nah, he wasn't necessary for this. I do think I, that well, he they played... Did, they, did, they did need, like, a big villain, and I think that he serves that purpose. I feel like he played the same character in that one-action Hulu movie that we saw a long time uh, ago. Boss boss level? Yeah. yeah. Like, he played definitely yeah, a guy, no. a manager in control, who would send his, like, little very similar to, to go fight, and then he, he ends up having a fight <laughs> scene at the end, which I assume he'll have some form of fight scene here. Um, but he's not the good guy. We know that, yeah. right? 
Uh, also, my, my last con is it tries to be cooler and smarter than it is from its overuse of slow motion that it has in a lot of its fight scenes, but yeah. even the bank robbery scene in the first 10 minutes to, you know, again, trying to be smart by uh, by Winston somehow being able to realize that the investor that he's trying to get, like his wife and him coordinating and kind of trying to trick the audience because when Frankie gives up the ancient coin press, or at least the case for it, you're supposed to think the coin press is in there, but not really. I, I, I didn't really like that either um what, what would you end up giving i'm going to give this episode a six and a half out of ten and i might continue watching now that you say there's only going to be two more episodes i probably will watch the rest of them but okay. had i not seen this i'm not sure if it really would have uh if i would have yeah, it's got mixed to negative reviews. It's got a 7.6 on IMDb. There's the uh, positive. Uh, 49% on Rotten Tomatoes. There's a negative. 54, per, 54 on Metacritic. Empire, The Telegraph, they both gave it uh, positive reviews. Fast-paced, ludicrous, fun, if you're able to turn off your brain. It got more mediocre when it went. It's all style at best and no substance. Hollywood Reporter, yes, The Guardian. No, it, it, it is all style at best. Yeah, you still get the John Wick even when they're saying the words and it appears on screen, but I, I agree with that. Again, any deep or meaning or something you're going to get from it. But even the director said that going into it, so I found that yeah. interesting. And the three showrunners, like, uh, they're the ones who wrote it. AV Club also called it mediocre, serviceable, but then Rolling Stones, New York Times, Variety, they really disliked it. They said it was long, it's hollow, it's disappointing. So so you have your uh, full I, map I just, there. I wish that we maybe even got more than just the con on Endo. I know that's the name of the show, but I wanted to see, like, the record room that you get in, in all the movies where, like, they put on a specific record and then there's some fight scene that happens okay. how that works or the betting room where they're constantly having the names of people that you need to kill and and uh and like where it goes excommunicado and they decide to market yeah. that yeah three last things one is that um they filmed this in budapest hungary uh the same studio that did blade runner 2049 mm. which also has a very similar like dark tone uh dune and moon knight the witcher so this isn't like a cheap studio for for all. oh no and you can tell this this has a huge budget they actually it. had to build the continental which is like 40 feet tall two nfl really uh, football st- wow. fields side by side it's it's weird um but but yeah they went through a lot to make it the music, uh, you mentioned it. It's funny because Albert Hughes said that the two Lionsgate's credit and Peacock's, not one time did they question the cost of a song. And we had a small music budget. We probably went five times above that. <laughs> The Talking Heads rejected um, them using one of yeah. their songs because of violence, and the same thing happened from the Cars when it was like "Let the Good Times Roll." He wanted to play that over like a really violent scene. Interesting that like those bands with how big the John Wick franchise is, even though it is violent. Well, if you know their when... personalities and their other songs, it doesn't sound like they would want to be established with a really shoot 'em up type series. Um, maybe, yeah, uh, the staircase fight. You didn't talk at all about yeah, that. Yeah, so the staircase fight is the fight with, um, at the very beginning. Did uh, anybody during... fall down all the stairs? Yes. There yeah. was a shot where, they, where I don't think he shoots someone. I think someone just accidentally falls. And then, yeah, you just see, like, uh, multiple stories of these, uh, these people running up the stairs, but you're following him as yeah. he's falling if it down. was a kid, that was probably John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> no, all right, um... Anything else you want to say? Yeah, I, I mentioned earlier, I think that you see Donnie Yen, and I'm not sure if that is him, but in kid form, because you see... Uh, oh, for real? Yeah, you see, like, someone looking at Was he them. blind? Uh, no, at that point? He's, he, there, was, there was just an Asian character that was wearing a hat, and then this small Asian kid walks... You're talking about up, Kane, though. Yeah. Runs up to him, yeah, and then, Kane, and then like, and says something to him, and I was wondering if that small Asian kid was supposed to be Kane. Okay, uh, do you think Ana de Armas is going to do a good job as, as the ballerina? I'm excited for the Assassin ballerina Lane. film. I know that Lance Reddick is even part of it, so if they're bringing in, like, really the old cast to try and make this ballerina thing a big success, I think that could but, work. But it, I don't think it's in America. I think it's in a different hotel hotel like i think that they're just going to be there for a i, I think time. i think she could do a good job yeah. all right well thanks for listening we'll see you on the next episode hope you enjoyed this one bye bye, bye.